How beautiful, how beautiful, how truthful. Oh, my goodness. Well, get myself pulled together here. <laughs> Swords in the air. This is my Bible. It's God's holy word. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I will be taught the word of the living God. Faith will come. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. My mind will be transformed. My spirit will be renewed. I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. What does it say on the screen? The value of wheat. Now, um, I, I want to say this, that um, wheat... Uh, I did a lot of research on, on wheat when the Lord dropped that in me about, about the wheat. Uh, you know, when we went on vacation, uh, we were, what, what state was that, Jackie, where we saw those, uh, where was it? Tennessee. Tennessee. And uh, there were just fields and fields of wheat, and um, it was absolutely beautiful. And... Um, but that wasn't when the Lord dropped this message in me. He dropped it in me um, a day or two ago. But uh, so I, I did some studying about wheat. And it actually, it's a symbol of, uh, of prosperity. Wheat is a symbol of growth, prosperity, and blessings. That's what it, it stands for. And that's been since the beginning of time. And uh, uh, wheat... Uh, is is not uh, economically challenge, uh, a challenging crop. It's an ease of grain storage. It's easy to store it as grain. It's an ease of converting into flour. So so the, the grain itself, there's not a lot that it has to go through for us to consume it. It's easy to store, and it's easy to change into flour, and it's nourishing. It's a nourishing cereal, actually, and it's very important in our diet uh, because of its fiber. And so uh, in the natural realm, uh, it's something that we, uh, we can convert to, uh, convert to bread and uh, uh, cereals and different things. But if you remember what Jesus said to us, he said, uh, I am the bread of heaven. I'm the bread of heaven. And, uh, and so when we look at that, that is uh, something. Once that wheat has been changed, and stay with me here. Uh, I pray that the Lord will help me get this out. Uh, when wheat uh, has been converted from a grain to flour and then to bread, then it's consumable and nourishing for us, which sustains us and gives us strength uh, that's what bread is. And, and keeping in mind that Jesus said, I am. I'm not going to be, but I am the bread of heaven. So I am for you. He said, if you don't eat of my body and if you don't drink of my blood, then, then, then you're, you're not mine. You're none of mine. And you say, well, how can that be? Because of what he symbolizes is something that we can take into ourselves that will give us health, that will give us strength, that will give us the things that we need. But first, uh, there had to be a process of, of, that Jesus had to go through. And uh, I'm just going to say this. This is not a scripture I'm going to give you. But the very first mention of wheat was in Genesis. It was in Genesis, uh, and it talked about uh, harvesting the wheat. And uh, that's chapter 30, if you want to write it down. But our first scripture is going to be Matthew 3. <clears throat> Matthew 3 and uh, verse 11, 12. In Matthew 3, verse 11, 12, uh, John came preaching. And you remember that John was uh, ordained from the womb. Remember that, that he was ordained from the womb uh, to be the forerunner 
uh, for Jesus. And uh, it's uh, verse 11, he said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. In other words, uh, the Savior is coming, the Messiah is coming, and he's the one that's going to forgive you of sin. He is the one. And so John the Baptist came preaching unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. And, uh, and so Jesus, he, he was telling those that were around that came to hear him. And don't you find it amazing that at that time that John the Baptist had been out in the wilderness and he looked a mess. You know, if you just think about it, he hadn't been to the barber shop or had not, been, had not been to the store to buy clothes. In fact, it said that he was wearing, his raiment was animal skins. It was animal skins. And he came eating locusts and honey. And, you know, and I've heard some say, well, uh, that didn't mean he was eating like real locusts that, because there was a tree uh, that in Jerusalem called the locust tree, and he was eating of that tree. But I don't believe that. I believe he came eating locusts, and I believe he came eating honey, and he looked a mess, wilder and Okuda Brown. But can I tell you this, that for some reason people were drawn to him? Let me tell you what that reason was. It was the Holy Spirit that was upon him to do the will of the Father, and that, that was for him to prepare the way for the Savior that was coming. Amen. And so he said that he's coming. He's coming after me. And he said he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with the fire. But they really didn't understand the baptism at that time because there had not been the great outpouring yet. And so when he said he's going to baptize you, the baptism that they knew about was being ducked under water. That was what the baptism was. And so they knew they were going to be drenched in something. They knew that they were going to be, they were going to be uh, from head to toe into something, but they just wasn't really sure yet what that something was. But they knew, they knew it was going to be good. And so, uh, so then uh, I, I looked up, oh, in verse 12 it says, now he's still talking about Jesus, whose fan is in his hand. And he, he will thor thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with, the, with unquenchable fire. And so this Jesus that he's telling about, this person that's coming, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. And, you know, I can remember my mother telling me this. When she was a young girl, she got saved when she was like 13, I think. And she got filled with the baptism. She was still a young woman. She got filled with the baptism. But she said there was no fire. Just wasn't any fire in it. And she said, Lord, I, I, you know, there's something. I've got something missing here. Because she would see other people. Boy, you know, it was like something come on them. And she wanted what they had. And so the Lord led her to this scripture that he baptized them with the Holy Ghost and fire. So she started seeking the Lord for the fire. And let me tell you, you seek him, you'll find him. Boy, anybody knew my mother, she had the fire God on her. Right up to the day she left this earth. And you know, that's what we want. Amen? Amen. I don't want to just be complacent or just ho-hum or barely enough. I want, to, I want to have it all, don't you? Yes. Amen. But look here in verse 12, he said, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So I looked up. It was just in me to search this one verse and, um, <clears throat> and the word fan. It said that uh, whose fan is in his hand. Now, remember, we're still talking about Jesus. Okay, in the original, uh, in the Strong's Concordance, it said a, a winnowing fork uh, to scatter like spit, to toss about. And so what he had in his hand, and what you got to understand about wheat is that, there, um, that the, the chaff 
is like the debris of it. And the wheat is what we call the goody. It's, the, it, it's, it's what's, uh, what, what's edible. It's what we want. It's what they grind into. And so there's a separation of, of what is, uh, is, is the good and what is just something to be tossed aside. But he said that his fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly, in other words, he will sort it himself. Say this out loud. I don't have to worry about that. That Jesus would do that for me. Yeah. And he said, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. And, and uh, in the Greek, the word purge means to cleanse thoroughly to, and, and to cleanse perfectly. How many here knows that when Jesus forgave us of our sins, that he forgave us completely, perfectly, totally, completely and perfectly. He was the only one that could do that. He was the only one that could absolutely, perfectly cleanse us uh, and that present us uh, as, a, as his bride. He could present us to the Father because he had cleansed us perfectly. Boy, I'm telling you, I'm trying to hold the Holy Ghost down this morning because when I think about what he's done for me, Oh, my soul magnifies his name. That he didn't barely cleanse me. He didn't take me out of the world and say, Well, Barbara, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wash away this part of your sin, but you just got to deal with the rest of it. But oh, he completely, totally, perfectly cleansed me and made me whole like him. Woo, Hallelujah. It's not according to how good you are. It's according to how good he is. He's our Savior. He is our Savior. Hey, hallelujah. So he perfectly cleansed us. And then he said, it said that he will thoroughly purge his floor. The floor is a threshing place. Uh, as, and it said, as rolled hard the grain and the chaff as just threshed, uh, threshed his wheat. And that means the church. And so what he does, he's got uh, his threshing floor. And I call it the place. I used to call it the, uh, the potter's wheel. But he'll take us up into his floor. And you know what? There's things that we walk through in this earth that we don't understand. We don't have an answer. And when you start trying to get your own answer, you usually end up with the wrong one. Amen? Amen? But there are things that we walk through. But can I tell you this? How many of us can say, once that we got through it, we turned around and looked and said, Oh, my goodness, boy, I needed deliverance out of that. That's why I went through that, because I needed deliverance. I didn't even know. I was stuck in that junk and didn't even realize it, didn't even know. But here he come. He took me to his threshing floor. He took me in that place that it was for my good, see. It was for my good. And he, he began to roll me in that place of love and in that place of deliverance and in that place of healing and in that place that I needed some changing done in me. And oh, he began to work on me. Why? Because it was his barn. It was his threshing floor. It was his place to, to get me all cleaned up and get me like him. Boy, aren't you glad to know Jesus? Oh, my goodness. I'm telling you, I could talk all day long and not say enough about Jesus, what he did for us, what he did. So we know the church, he took us to that place. And he's still taking us there. He's still taking us there to let us grow up in him and be able to be mighty warriors and mighty men and women of God. Amen. So I looked up the word that it said that he gathers his wheat into the garner. That's a granary, a barn, if you will, to put us away where we won't spoil, where we won't be devoured, where we won't be eat up by the birds of the air, 
but he puts us in a place of safety. Say this out loud, I'm in his place of safety. Boy, isn't this good? Oh, my goodness. Now turn to John, John chapter 12. John chapter 12. We're going to get two verses there. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. And I, I want to just uh, give you a little insert right there. If you notice that in some places he will say, The Son of Man, and then in some places he'll say, The Son of God. And what I want you to, to realize is that when he calls himself the son of man, that is of the Adam nature. That is of the physical man that he came to take upon, take upon uh, himself uh, to walk out so that we could be free. And when he calls himself the son of God, that's the spirit side of him that, uh, like us, like, see, we call ourselves children of God. And that's how he did. But when he said, the hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified, that meant he's fixing to go through the cross, death, burial, and resurrection. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. In other words, he was saying, I'm trying to tell you, and I'm using wheat as an example, that I must die. Because wheat, if the grain of wheat doesn't fall into the ground, it can't produce more wheat. It can only produce, if it goes into the ground and it dies, then it can reproduce. Now, that one grain of sand, it could, it's still good and it's edible, but it would stop right there. In other words, the only people that Jesus could have reached could be those that were walking the earth that day. But he was telling them, I must die. He said that except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And I can tell you, if you've ever looked upon a wheat field, if you ever looked upon a wheat field, you would see how much that just burying those grains brings forth. And that was what Jesus saw in himself dying was to bring us forth that we are a production of that death that he went into the ground and died. <clears throat> Verse 25, I'll go ahead and give you that. It said, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. I'm telling you, this is, this is powerful, powerful words. That Jesus represented himself as wheat. But yet he represented the church as wheat. Something that will continue to produce. Something that will continue to be nourishing. Something that will be healing. Something that will continue until he comes for us. Jesus had to die physical death, and we have to die out to the old nature and take on the new nature of Christ. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Amen. Okay, now last scripture. Matthew chapter 13. 
Go back to Matthew. And I had a lot of scriptures, but I did not feel led to give them to you, so it's going to be short and sweet this morning. And uh, we miss Jesslyn being here. She's on vacation. Matthew 13. And we're going to start with uh, verse 24. And I'm going to say this, that I love the way Jesus taught in parables. Because, I, you know, I have to have something simple uh, for me to get it, to break it apart and understand it. And Jesus taught that way. He, he would teach in parables, uh, examples of things. I remember, you know, I think I've told, yeah, I did, I've told that here, that years ago that uh, I had a, a five different ladies that worked for me, and they were all different denominations. And uh, I, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, how can I explain to them about the Holy Ghost? that it's real and that that he has his own language and he you know who he is how can i explain that and that they would even need him because you know a lot of time people don't seek to be filled with the holy ghost because in their heart and mind they think well i've got jesus i've received jesus and that'll get me to heaven that's all i need but oh you need so much more uh, you know, to be, uh, be be all that. I like to say it like this. I want to be all that he wants me to be. And if he's got a gift for me, I most certainly want to receive it. <laughs> amen. If I got anybody with me? Amen. Yes. Amen. I want all that he's got. And so the Lord showed how he showed it to me to explain to them. But see, he's an example God. He showed it to me with a um, an egg beater and electric mixer. He said, "You." Uh, and so that's how I explained it to them that if I was going to bake a cake and I could use one of those old, uh, you know, and I would eventually get it done through my hard work. I would eventually get it done because I had the right ingredients. Or I could plug into the power source. I could get an electric mixer, and all I've got to do is plug into the power source, and it will do the work for me. And that's what the Holy Ghost does for us. He does the work for us. He lives in us, and he does it for us. And so they understood. They understood that, see. But the Lord had to give me that as an example, and that's what he does, see. He, uh, and I love the way he teaches. I love it. So verse 24 says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Now, if you stop right there, and I'm not going down there, but if you'll glance down to verse 37, uh, you'll know what he's talking about right there. So first of all, he said that the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. And then verse 37 said, He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. See, he called himself the son of man. See there? And, um, and so uh, where he sowed it was into the world. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Now, first of all, they all it all looked alike. The, the, the wheat and the tares looks exactly alike. The stem, everything, you can't tell them apart sometimes. They all sit in the same church house. They all sing the same songs. They all talk about the same Lord. You cannot tell them apart until they comes the time for producing fruit. Is it important for us to produce fruit? That we be recognized. Amen? So how did they know? It says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also, because the tares had no fruit. Verse 27, so the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, Didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? In other words, you didn't sow it. Where did it come from? He said unto them, 
an enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and get them up? And boy, let me tell you, we are firsthand to be a volunteer for that, aren't we? Yeah. Huh? Come on. Let me tell them, Lord. I know, why, I know how they're acting. Let me go be the one to pull them up and throw them out. But Jesus didn't say do that. He said, you leave them alone and you let them grow up with the wheat and you let them, you, you leave that to me. In other words, that's what Jesus is saying. He said in verse 29, but he said, but he said, nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. In other words, when you start taking it into your own hands and you're going you're gonna to fix it yourself, then that's when you may be destroying the good stuff. So you know what? We have a job to do. Jesus Christ was the first wheat that was sown into the ground, came forth. Even at his resurrection, brought them out of the dead. It said they followed him, came out of the dead and followed him down the streets. Can you imagine? You just buried Uncle Joe. Jesus is walking in the abode of the dead saying, I am he. I'm the, I'm the son of God. I've, and if you'll believe on me, I am the resurrection. And Uncle Joe believes on him. And you're looking, you just buried him last week and there he is walking the streets because he, Jesus Christ is the resurrection. He is the life. He's not going to be anything. He is present tense. He had to die. He had to become that grain of wheat that he labeled himself. But then he labeled the church as wheat. We are who he says we are. How can he call us wheat when he called himself wheat? Because he said that we are his. We're his. He's the, he's, he is the sacrifice. But we are his brothers and sisters left here to carry out the plan of salvation. Let's be fruit producers. Let's die out to ourselves and live unto him. Let's be all that he wants us to be. Amen? Amen. I'm telling you, this morning, we've had an absolute wonderful presence of the Lord. If you missed this service here, being here this morning, oh, my goodness. How powerful, how powerful he's been this service. Amen? Amen. In verse 30, he said, let both grow together let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. There's a gathering coming. There is a gathering coming. If he looked at us as something as tender and precious as a grain of wheat, you can rest assured he will gather you into his garner and into his barn, and he will take care of us. Amen. All right, so we're going to give a review of this. we got a prayer request. Okay, you can bring it on down, Shell. So Jesus used himself as a grain of wheat because he's a, it's a symbol. He's a symbol of growth, prosperity, and blessing. He used himself. Number two, Jesus will do the separating. We don't have to worry about that. But I'm going to say this. We cannot be a judge, but I've said this for many years. I'm a fruit inspector. I'm going to be inspecting and looking for fruit. Is there any fruit there? Am I seeing any production of fruit? Because, see, just because you say, Lord, Lord, doesn't mean you'll enter in. Just because that, that you, you, uh, uh, you know, 
you live a haphazard life. He said straight is the way that leads. See, that's our way. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> and the third thing is that Jesus will gather us into his barn. He will, he will gather us into his, say, his barn and his place of safety. Are we producers? Are we bringing forth fields? And I'm going to tell you this, and I did not know it when I was a, a kid, when I was young, uh, when I was... Uh, uh, but I remember uh, when I was probably in my early 20s, I guess, maybe early 20s, I dreamed a dream, and it's as real today as it was when I dreamed it. And I saw myself standing in a wheat field, and at that time I had no earthly clue that God would call me to preach. I had no idea. But I saw myself standing in a wheat field, and it was so thick, the wheat and it was tall. And uh, I had, uh, and I looked it up after I dreamed it. It was a sickle. It's like a, a, the blade of it's round like that, and then it's on a handle. And I saw myself uh, working, and I was cutting that wheat. And boy, I'd work, 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 and it was like you couldn't hardly even see where I'd cut, cut any. And I worked, and, uh, and it was start, began to get dark. In the dream, it began to get dark, and I knew I had to hurry because it was going to get dark where I couldn't, I couldn't uh, harvest any more wheat. But see, there's a harvest for each and every one of you, and Lisa, God's got a harvest for you. It's a vineyard. It's a vineyard of your own to harvest. And sometimes in this natural realm, we think it's, it's all about a church or a house, but, but, uh, but it's not. There is a vineyard that you're to harvest. Uh, but uh, the Lord said, don't get antsy about it. Yes, don't, don't, be, uh, don't be worried or don't be fretful trying to figure it out. He said, it will come in due season if you faint not. It will come in due season. But you have a season of harvesting. In fact, it's not even going to be attached to a church. And I do not know. I have no clue, but God does. It's, a, it's something. Um, and see, here's another thing that I need you to understand. And I'll use Paige for an example because I know she loves me. And she, you know. But um, there's a need for uh, ladies and gentlemen to have their hair done in this earth. Some, some people don't know how to do it. They can't do it. And so God calls hairdressers. There are people that, uh, that they, don't, they don't know how to paint. And so God instills in them the ability to paint. Do you understand? There are things, there are people who, when they were little children, they didn't sit on the floor and say, ooh, when I grow up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'm going to haul garbage. That's what I'm going to do. They didn't sit on the floor and say that. But God called. There, there's a calling for those to carry garbage, and how he showed that to me was that if there wasn't anyone to carry off garbage, then there could be no hospital. There could be no doctor's offices because the, the diseases would rage. You understand? And so, so what, to, to run this earth, there is a need for everything. I can remember when I was a little girl, my mother and the neighbors would get together and they had quilting frames. And they'd, uh, they'd drop them. They'd, they'd hoist them up to the ceiling while they weren't working. And then they'd drop them down and they'd sit and quilt. Well, why would they do that? Because there was a need. There was a need for covers. Do you understand? And so the things that God has instilled in you, you need to be very proud of that. You need to be very proud that you, are you a lover of animals? Are you one that, that if you see something crossing the road, you, you want to make sure it don't get hit? See, there, there's stuff that God, and I don't even, I wasn't planning on going here, but God's taken me there, that you've got to understand that for everything that God takes care of his earth, the devil doesn't control God's earth. We allow him to do stuff 
stuff in our lives when we don't understand the power of the word. But, but God is good. God's a good God. And he has things in place for us. He has, pl- he has things. You know, and I'm going to use Jackie. Jackie's been building a, um, he's been working on building a, a gate uh, on the back fence that he built. It's beautiful. The back fence that he built was beautiful. But it, we, he didn't put a gate in it. And, and the children need to come through our yard to go catch the bus and they he had just had like a wire a little wire fence on that part and um, and they'd unhook it and leave it undone and uh, and uh, you know go to catch the bus and so uh, he he decided uh, to build a gate and so I helped him get it out there yesterday because you know, it's big it's like a big gate and um, and so when he, he put it set it up in there and and it was off like just I mean not a quarter of an inch and, uh, and, and I said, well, who's going to see it? He said, I will. I'll see it. And so he's going to work on, you know, lowering, the, you know, and doing whatever he's got to do to make it perfectly fit. Well, see, Jackie, when he was a little boy, didn't sit in the floor and say, well, I can tell you right now, I'm going to be a good carpenter one of these days. That's what I'm going to do. No, that wasn't what it was, but God put it in him. Do you understand that there are qualities that, that, that God put it in you? Maybe you're that one that you see somebody that they're tired, they got a flat tire, that you're going to stop and help them. Maybe you're that one. Come on, saints. We're wheat and we're producers in this earth. We're not just producers to go to church twice a week. We're not just producers just just to act like uh, uh, that we're Mr. and Miss Spiritual, but we are producers in the earth for Jesus Christ, for us to be all that he wants us to be. Amen. Hallelujah. Have I got any producers in the house? Yes, hallelujah. You know, uh, 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 Becky, Becky and Big John, they've uh, started having a flea market over in Jacksonville, right? Jacksonville. And you say, well, my goodness, they're all over the place, but not the one that God told them to start because God had them to start it. Why? Because you know what? You do not know the people they're going to cross. You don't know the the, the opportunities that they're going to have to to just speak the name of Jesus. Maybe somebody's starts telling them how sick they are or what's going on. Well, you know what? All they got to say is, I'm a praying woman. I'm a praying man. And I'm going to pray about this. Can I pray for you right now? 99% of the time, they'll say yes. So come on. Come on, wheat. Amen. Stand to your feet. Did we receive this morning? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I think Shelly gave me a... Shelly, did you give me a prayer request? Oh, Jackie's got it. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Jackie, you go ahead and... uh, Yeah, get you a mic. Okay, yes. And you know what? Deborah Rogers, she loves her some Jesus. Do y'all hear me? And I don't know of anybody that can out-sing her. I'd love for her to get to come here and sing for us, wouldn't you? Yes. Yes, amen. A scripture came to me uh, concerning this prayer request. Deborah Rogers' prayer for strength in her body. Just out of the hospital, uh, she's having problems with her back and intestinal issues. (coughs) Psalms 18, verse 1, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My buckler, the horn of my salvation, and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies." Psalms 18, 1 through 3. For Deborah Rogers and for everybody who will receive it. The Lord is our strength. He's our fortress that we can run to. He saves us from our enemies. The Lord is so wonderful. As we trust Him and call upon Him, we are delivered. 
That's the good news we have in our resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus, we praise you. We praise you because what you have done for us has no limits, no limits whatsoever. We can call upon you and be saved from our enemies. Lord, we extend strength to Deborah Rogers right now. According to her request for prayer, Lord, we lift up her in the heavenlies right now in the name of Jesus. And we declare according to this very word that strength comes into her body, that everything that her body needs, the the ministry the of the Spirit of God comes to her this day pick me up. according to her Every desire and our request. Strength and deliverance. Strength and deliverance to Deborah Rogers in the name of Jesus. Makes me wanna shout. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Deborah you Rogers, you lift up your voice to the Lord and give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I receive. Thank you, Lord. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, turned me around, how he set my feet on solid ground. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all shout hallelujah thank you jesus you lord you're worthy of all the glory all the honor and all the praise it makes me want to share Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you for victory. Woo, glory. Thank you for victory. Say that. Thank you for victory. Woo, thank you for victory. Hey, I got the victory. I've been in a battle. I've been fighting. I've been warring. Oh, but I got the victory. The enemy's under my feet. Woo, hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hey, lo shalavas Hey, my good. Oh, my goodness. I can't love them anymore. Oh, my. Here, turn around. Turn around. Let them see. <laughs> Well, thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Right. Uh huh.
See there? Yeah. Okay, so, so she went through something. What she's telling, I know they can't hear it on live stream, so I'll give a short version of it. Uh, she, uh, she went through something and, uh, and had to uh, live in a different place that she really didn't, didn't um, want to. She th was thankful that the Lord gave her somewhere to live, but it wasn't like she wanted. But see, while there, while there, that changing, changing going on in that family while being there and that's what I'm saying that a lot of times we do not understand why the whys and what we need to do is do this father I'm just going to praise you anyway because I know there's I know there's good going to come out of this yeah. Yeah. amen yeah. Yeah. amen and you know sometime uh, we always look at life like this we think the world is all going to come to us they're just going to all start coming to church so we can preach to them salvation but that's not what Jesus did Jesus went to the world, and he preached, and they got saved, and, and they got healed and delivered. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad to know Jesus? Hey, hallelujah. All right, are hearts clear this morning? All right. Are you ready? Um, and I'm going to tell you this. It's going to be hot this week, so y'all <laughs> y'all be safe, okay? Be safe. Oh, my goodness, look at this. Turn around, let them see. <laughs> How funny. Here, let them see. There. I think they've been in the Bible bookstore. What do y'all think? What's your mama? Your mama's going, what's she going to say? Uh, oh, my Lord, come here. Come here, come down here. Come down, come on. Come on, turn around, let them see. Come here, Grayson. Grayson, come here. Turn around, let them see. Look at this. Look at this. Is this not funny? I'm, t <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh, my goodness. Well, somebody lost her uh, on her little thing. Uh, I, I'm telling you, uh, God is just growing our kids up and, and filling them full of the word and and uh, it's so exciting to watch them praise and, and to hear word coming out of them. Amen. Amen. All right. You ready for your blessing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city and the field. I'm blessed coming in and going out. And everything I put my hands to, God causes it to prosper. I said God causes it to prosper. No, really, God causes it to prosper. And our children shall marry the right person the first time at the right time. Our children's hearts and minds are open to receive knowledge and wisdom and speak it forth. I am a light. I cannot be hid. I am salt of the earth that causes mankind to thirst for God. I'm full, filled up, and running over with health, wholeness, completeness, nothing missing, nothing broken. And we give all honor and praise to God in Jesus' name. Oh, my Lord, look at this. Are we still rolling, Shell? Come here. Come here, all the kids. Come down here. Look at this. Where's, uh, where's Aubrey? Aubrey, get down here. Don't you look at this. I'm telling you what. <laughs> here, look here. I want everybody to see. Here, wait a minute. Here we go. Here, look. Cheese. Cheese. Okay. Yeah, get me one, too. Say cheese. <laughs> oh my goodness, how funny. All right. All right, we you can you can let us go.